Okay, as Monica said, my name is Hillary Schaefer, and I was the lead environmental planner, M, the lead environmental planner for the South Magnolia CSO control project. So a little background on the project. Um, CSO stands for Combined Sewer Overflow, and the project was to construct a 1.5 million gallon storage tank as a place to store those CSOs, where uh, we have wastewater and stormwater that enters the system, and during heavy rains, it caused overflows into Puget Sound. Uh, this project is part of a countywide effort to reduce those CSOs. So part of my job is to work with uh, local, state, and federal agencies to make sure that the projects that we construct comply with all applicable laws. One of those is the National Historic Preservation Act. Specifically, Section 106 of that act requires federal agencies take into account the effects of a project on historic properties and with the great emphasis on the tribes. Okay, so why do we care about this? The existing sewer system was designed to take advantage of gravity. Water flows downhill, closest to the water bodies that we know and love today. Um, historically, the shorelines and waterways served as uh, high travel areas for local peoples, um, places to live and gather food and when we build a new project we're going to be digging, excavating uh, and possibly uncovering a lot of the um, artifacts that are buried in the ground. So we would prefer to avoid them but unfortunately because of where our current infrastructure exists it's not possible to do that. Um, so WTD, Wastewater Treatment Division, comes in early in the planning process to work with um, local, uh, like I said before, um, governments, agencies, state and federal, and community members. Part of my job with the whole environmental planning team is to work to identify potential impacts as early as possible. One of the ways that we do that is to work with um, the Department of Natural Resources and Parks Historic Preservation Program. All of our projects, big and small, are screened by the environmental planning group and the Historic Preservation Program for potential impacts. Depending on the level of impact in the project location, we will get the tribes involved, and that's part of our job as environmental planners, to work with the tribes early, work with the communities early to see if we can minimize or avoid those impacts. We also work with archaeologists, as you've already met tonight, um, bringing them on board as early as possible to do pre-construction work, go out to the project site, kind of get a feel for what's out there before we actually start so that we're not too surprised. So in the case of Magnolia, um, we heard on a Friday afternoon that there had been a discovery. The next step was to determine whether or not it's significant. We get the archaeologists involved, make a recommendation to, in this case, the Washington State Department of Ecology, who um, conferred with the um, State Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation. We got approval to proceed, even though the site was determined to be significant at that time. So I think Monday or Tuesday, we were back to work. Um, a supplemental treatment plan was required because it was determined to be significant and we were going to have an adverse impact. There was no way to build a storage tank without impacting this historic site. So early engagement, part of my job, all that pre-project planning, getting everybody at the, at the table at once, we were able to get the treatment plan approved within five days. It was very, very quick. And then that's when our team of environmental science associates, archaeologists, got to work.